It's bowl season, and the Kansas Jayhawks have a matchup against the Rebels of UNLV in the Guaranteed Rate Bowl tonight, 7 o'clock down in Arizona. Let's get into this matchup. Hey, what's good, y'all? It's your boy JD6 here. I'm with my man. Shout out to KC Sports Authority. Make sure y'all go check that podcast out, man. You heard the man. And welcome into the KC Sports Authority Podcast. I'm your host, Keegan Russell, and Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays to you, all of you out there, especially Jayhawk fans. I am recording this here on Christmas. Um, so I hope you guys had a great Christmas day, spend time with the family, and got to watch a lot of fun uh, sports today. Unfortunately, the Chiefs uh, dropped one very disappointing loss, but you know, let's move past that and quickly get into this KU football game that we've got. The bowl game guaranteed rate bowl down in Arizona, Kansas versus UNLV. And I'm going to do a quick preview on this, go through some of the game headlines heading into it, talk a little bit about UNLV, and of course, do our game matchups and previews. Uh, first off, though, if you're following the podcast, if you're watching along today, thank you so much. If you're watching over here on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button real quickly. We would greatly appreciate that. Get us up over 300 view or 300 subscribers by the end of the year. That is our next current goal. Um, if you're listening on Spotify, thank you so much. You can follow the podcast. You can give us a five-star review. Wherever you're watching or listening from, make sure you're sharing it with your friends. And, of course, you can always hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at KCSA Pod. All right, let's get into this matchup. Kansas UNLV guaranteed rate bowl down in Arizona. you got the 8-4 and four Kansas Jayhawks going up against the 9-4 and four, uh, Rebels of UNLV. Two teams that are pretty evenly matched on paper. However, KU does open as a double-digit favorite. Have seen that line float anywhere between about 11 and a half all the way up to 13 and a half. And there's a lot of things that go into why KU is a two touchdown favorite, which we'll get into. But let's start first with some of the major headlines, things that we need to know about this game specifically. Um, a lot of them, honestly, on the KU side, we all know Andy Kotelnicki. That's probably the big one first. Andy Kotelnicki is gone with the the move to Penn State. So you got new offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes coming in. This is probably going to be a, a Jim Zabrowski game. Uh, so very curious to see how the offense is going to look, if things will be different, if things will be the same, what kind of tweaks we'll see from um, Zabrowski and staff. Um, I think that's kind of headline number one, so a new look there. Headline number two, we've got a couple guys that are not going to be active for this game. Let's start with Dominic Pooney, our stud left tackle we've had this year, the grad transfer. Um, this is, I guess this is his second year at Kansas. So he's out of eligibility. He's withdrawing from the game so that he can go get ready for the NFL draft and get ready on those workouts. Um, a guy that's probably gonna be a day two pick as of right now. So he will not be here, which means there's a lot of questions on the offensive line. Um, the thought is so far from what we've seen, and this is not nothing official official yet, but what we've seen is that the freshman Calvin Clements from Lawrence, Kansas is going to get the start at left tackle. So could be a big question mark there. KU without their stud offensive tackle there. On the other side, though, however, they might still be without offensive tackle. Bryce Cable do the right tackle. Uh, he was injured, didn't play in that final game. Uh, Michael Ford also had some injuries. So could have a lot of question marks at offensive line. Um, K though does have some good depth though with Armaj Reed Adams could kick over there. Kobe Bain, Spencer Lavelle. So you got a couple options there. But that's, that's another big, big, uh, question mark going into this game. And then on the other side of the ball, um, probably the, the biggest, I wouldn't say necessarily surprise, but the biggest potential surprise of the, of the year so far is Austin Booker is also decided to not play in this game. He did not travel with the team. That could mean multiple things. What it most likely means though, is that his time at Kansas has come to an end. Um, whether that be he enters into the transfer portal or he just prepares for the NFL draft and goes into the draft early, had a very solid season. And I'm guessing that a lot of his camp right now is saying that he's played his way into a potential spot in the draft so he is also not going to be playing that's probably our biggest loss defensively still have a lot of great players on the defensive side of the ball that we've talked about before plenty of times but austin booker is a big loss there so those are my three big big headlines i guess coming into this matchup as far as things that could impact um the preparation of the game the game itself so no andy Cotal nicky how will this offense look with with uh coach z instead of coach k 
Um, are we going to be more pass heavy? Are we going to be sticking to the run dominance? What's going to look like there? How's this offensive line going to hold up with guys shifting around? And what type of impact does that have on not just the play calling, but the, the game plan as a whole? And of course, Austin Booker being gone on the defensive side of the ball, it's a big loss at defensive line. Uh, however, though, KU is still a double digit favorite um, heading into this into this matchup. Uh, UNLV finished the year nine and four. Um, lost to Boise State in the Mountain West, um, so they didn't win their conference championship. But let's kind of talk about them a little bit here. Um, they are 9-4. and four. Let's kind of dive into statistically here. Pretty solid year, first year under new head coach Barry Odom. If And if that name sounds familiar to you guys, that's because it should. He coached at Missouri a couple years ago. Um, first year with UNLV, led them to 9-4, and 6-2 and two in conference play. A uh, pretty solid team. This is a team that averaged 34 points a game, primarily on the backs of a freshman quarterback. Um, played pretty well all year. Uh, I always, I'm going to get his last name wrong. So Maeva, um, solid freshman quarterback, better statistically than Jason Bean. I know Jason Bean didn't, you know, start every single game, but Maeva's got almost 2,800 passing yards and 14 TDs as a freshman. Uh, he's kind of what makes their their team go. However, though, they do run the ball pretty effectively as a whole. Uh, coming into this game, they've been averaging about 180 rushing yards a game, um, which is pretty solid. And we know KU's got a good run game, um, but the UNLV run game is also really solid. But passing-wise, he's also averaging about 235 yards a game. Um, so they do sling the ball. They do get that spread out. They've got a pretty solid wide receiver that – does a lot of the, a lot of the offensive uh, things for them when they go his direction, um, but UNLV, you know, say what you want about the big or the Mountain West. Their schedule, not a bad schedule, not a great schedule. Um, their you know biggest game they had in their schedule this year was Michigan. They did get blown out thirty five to seven. That was before they turned to Maeva. Uh, then immediately when they turned to Maeva, they started rolling offensively. Uh, again, lesser opponents, but Vanderbilt, UTEP, Hawaii, Nevada, Colorado State, all straight wins right there. Lost to Fresno State, blew out New Mexico, blew out Wyoming, who we saw Wyoming earlier in the year play pretty well against Baylor, if you guys remember that game. And then they're probably that one of their other toughest games on the schedule was at Air Force. Air Force was really solid this year. Uh, they did win 31-27. to That was a game I did want to reference up until the Boise State loss because Air Force is one of those teams that, obviously loves to run the ball. And just to kind of give you guys an idea of what they did, even though UNLV won 31-27, Air Force still managed to run for 344 yards on 62 carries, which of course is a, a ton and a ton of carries, more than most any team runs ever. So I don't think KU's getting 62 carries. But that does tell me that KU can still run the ball on this team. Um, a couple other statistics here I was looking at, you know, defensively, uh, their defense is only giving up 27 points a game, which bodes well for KU since that's you know we average more than that. Uh, so advantage there. Um, they do give up over 160 rushing yards a game. So again, you know if you want to talk about another headline or point of emphasis, it's you know nothing new. We've talked about this all year. The run game for Kansas is going to be probably the most important thing offensively. Getting Devin Neal, and Daniel Highshot going, so clearly have opportunities to run on this team. They've also given up 22 rushing touchdowns on the year. Uh, passing wise, they give up about eight and a half yards per attempt. Uh, they also give up about 240 passing yards a game. And we know Bean doesn't necessarily have to air it out all the time. He's certainly capable of throwing downfield. But I think there's some some parts of this defense there too that he can tap into and in kind of have a big day offensively. I think they're without one of their defensive backs who went into the transfer portal. Um, but the other ones I want to look at, the third down conversion, um, as a defense, they hold teams to about 35%, 36% on third down conversion. So third down is going to be key, of course. Uh, fourth down, they're about 55%, you know, 11 for 20. Um, I think that's going to be a, a spot to look at. Red zone, not a great red zone team, uh, giving up a lot of points a lot of opportunities in the red zone. So maybe Kansas can find ways to capitalize there. But that's just kind of a quick, quick look at UNLV. I didn't want to spend too much time on them because obviously haven't watched that much tape. But let's just kind of talk about uh, Kansas, uh, what they need to do to end up 
winning this bowl game and solidify the season that they've had and continue to solidify this run that Lance Light holds on in building the program back up. Obviously, you know, we have the bowl appearance last year. Disappointing into the game, but what an exciting game that was for KU fans just to see us back in our first bowl game in, in over a decade. Now we're playing in back-to-back bowl games, so I think we have a lot to be excited about just for the fact that we're playing in a bowl game again. Um, but I think this is going to be a good opportunity for Kansas to showcase, continue to showcase on the national stage what this program is capable of, even with some of these you know, headline players and key coaches that we're going to be missing for this game. Uh, I think everything starts like we we talk about on offense with the run game of Devin Neal and Daniel Hyshaw, and I wouldn't expect anything less than that. I think this is a game where they could could run close to 200 yards. I, I fully expect Devin Neal to have a big game. He's one I do have questions on because this could be the potential last game we see for Devin Neal in a Kansas uniform. Could come back next year. He's a junior. He's had a tremendous year. You know, right now he's kind of been in different spots and draft boards, anywhere from a, a day three pick to undrafted. But depending on what kind of talk he's getting from the NFL level, this could be one of his last games because it's kind of hard for a college running back to come back and play even better to move up the draft board. But who knows? So if this is his last game, then let's just cherish the the time he's been he's had here in Kansas. I think he's going to have a tremendous game. I think he's going to be dominant. Uh, a couple other guys offensively, you know, a lot of seniors. Um, Jason Bean gets his one final shot to deliver us to a bowl victory. I think that's exciting for him considering his up and down career he's had. You know, we've talked about it before, kind of like the David McCormick of the football team. You love him, but then he makes some of those bonehead mistakes and you just want to rip him. Uh, you just get so frustrated. But he gets the chance to deliver us to a bowl victory in his final college football appearance. I think that's fun for him. I think that's exciting. Um, I think he's going to have a lot to play for. He, he knows how that game ended last year in the bowl appearance. And I think he wants to show fans that he can, he can deliver one more time. Jason Bean style. Uh, of course, Mason Fairchild. I think he's another guy offensively that we could see a big day from being his last game. And he's still got some to showcase for, for the NFL draft. So I fully expect this offense to come in, and, and be dynamic and be well-rounded and push push the, the pedal. Um, I think this is a game where both both teams have pretty solid offenses, pretty similar play style. Um, I think UNLV throws the ball a little bit more, but they do like to run the option play quite a bit like KU does. Maybe not as much of the Jayhawk formation or Wildcat formation that you see in some other programs, but they do run that, that option and they have the ability of doing so. Um, to me, I think as I kind of get into game predictions here and kind of thoughts on the game itself, I think this is a first team to 30. Um, the over-under is about 63 and a half. So the sports betting market at least thinks it's going to be high scoring. Um, I still, without Austin Booker, I would still give the advantage to Kansas defensively. I think the fact that they played a bowl game last year, they have a fairly experienced team. We know both uh, Kobe Bryant and Melo Dotson are playing. Um, outside of Austin Booker, there's really nothing we're missing. You know, this is Kenny Logan's final game, so I think you're going to see a lot from him, Rich Miller. Um, I guess the one question I would have defensively is who's going to generate the pass rush without Austin Booker? You know, Jeremy Robson has been a solid guy on the other side, Hayden Hatcher, uh, some of the guys up there in the middle, Tommy Dunn's been good. So who's going to create that pressure defensively on the quarterback um, without Austin Booker? Because we know Austin Booker can be a menace not just sacking the quarterback, but stopping the run and, and preventing a lot of plays from, from blowing up. So I think defensive lines are going to be a fun one to look at. Maybe that means you lean in a little bit more with some of the linebackers. Maybe we, we do some um, sneaky coverages here to get a safety in the backfield on a, on a, on a, on a pass rush. Um, but I think that's going to be a point of emphasis to look at. Um, I do like KU's defensive back against this wide receiver core. You know, Kobe Bryant has not been targeted very much. Mello has, and Mello's played fairly well. I, I would look to the defensive backfield here to to be solid. I think, you know, you've got enough guys up, up there with a solid veteran presence that want to really show out and, and limit this UNLV team. So I think they're going to have a big game. Um, I, I think the UNLV offense is going to struggle a little bit more. You know, they're in kind of year one of their program build, so kind of where KU was last year. So, again, I would give that advantage to Kansas. I just feel like we have a little bit more excitement on our end and more to play for with, with all the direction the football team's going. 
Um, you have a big game like this on primetime television where the the, the whole nation kind of gets to, to watch this Kansas team. I think that's huge for them. They have a good recruiting class coming in, like I've talked about. And if you haven't checked that episode out, you can go back and watch it. Um, but I think they just have a great opportunity here to show to the rest of college football that we are a solid program. We're building and that we're a fun program, and this is a program you want to come play for. And they'll have some several positions open next year that they can still look to in the transfer portal and for future recruits. You know, Arizona has been a key state in recruiting. They've picked up several recruits this last year from Arizona. So the fact that they're also playing down there helps them with the recruiting. They can continue to show that incoming freshmen can, can have an impact and they can find a place on this team to develop and get better and get better. So I think KU, again, has the advantage on most sides. I don't really have a score prediction necessarily yet. I'm still looking through, waiting to see who the guys are that are starting, who the guys are that are going to sit out. I know it's pretty much finalized, but there'll still be some more stuff coming out ahead of kickoff. But I I, I feel pretty good. I think if this is somewhere between like 35-21 um, or 35-24, somewhere in there, uh, I do think UNLV can move the ball against us. You know, we've been – a little susceptible against the run this year, so I think they could still get out, run the ball, keep keep the defense honest, and then and throw it when they need to. But I do think the KU offense has the advantage over UNLV's defense. I guess the big question mark then comes down to, though, is how is that offensive line going to look without Dominic Pooney? Is Bryce Cable do playing? If he's not playing, who's stepping in where? If it's Calvin Clements at left tackle, you get a glimpse of what the future could look like. Can the freshman hold up against a, a higher-end college football program uh, edge rusher so that'll be exciting to see but all around this is exciting i think fans are going to have a lot of fun watching this game hopefully they can deliver a the jayhawks can deliver a better christmas present to us than what the chiefs did today um but I, i'm, I'm going to be excited for this matchup tomorrow night i hope you guys are excited for it guaranteed rate bowl in arizona uh, ku has the opportunity to win a bowl game which we haven't seen in quite a long time and that will really i think open the floodgates of what is still to come um a lot of, lot of uh, excitement in this program. If you've seen the stadium, stadium's basically destroyed, so they're getting the renovations going, rebuilding, going to have have all that ready to go. The recruiting classes are starting to pick up. We're seeing Leipold and coaching staff do a lot of work in the transfer portal and recruitment. There's just a lot of excitement going on here, and a bowl victory would just really put a good pin on this season, Going to put a good pin on Jason Bean's career and some of these other seniors that are going out like Kenny Logan and Rich Miller, who are really kind of the heart of the program the last couple of years. So that's, I think that's going to do it. Didn't want to dive in too, too much. We're going to have a full recap after the game with uh, JB and whoever else I get on. We'll see um, where we'll really just kind of dive back into the season itself and, and, and the game as well. And just kind of talk about, the the 2023 football season as we start to look forward to the upcoming year and then after that you know throughout the off season we'll kind of talk a little bit more about the roster guys that are leaving guys coming in um i do have a a uh, hopefully a player that is going to come on here in the off season to kind of talk a little bit about some of the things going on behind the scenes in the program and kind of get you guys a player's look from the inside you know of course we've done that with sam burt several times on the podcast and hopefully here soon i can get an active player on the team currently to do some of that with so if you haven't yet you know if you're watching here on youtube go ahead and hit that subscribe button that way you can always stay up to date with any future content we still got a lot of stuff coming down the pipe uh middle of ku basketball season we're about to start big 12 play here soon we'll have our big 12 you know kind of preview episode coming soon chiefs despite the frustrating loss it is still you know the final stretch for playoffs so we'll get talking in more of that um, just a lot of fun stuff we're doing right now the royals have had a great off season of course, we've had plenty of you guys check out those episodes, and we're so grateful for that. Just a lot of stuff to talk about. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on Spotify, go ahead and rate the podcast. Give us a five-star review. I'd appreciate that. Of course, you can hit us up Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at KCSA Pod. Would love any feedback you guys have, any ideas for episodes, just anything you want to chat about, hit us up. You can always leave comments here on YouTube. Uh, text us on any or hit us up on any of those just to just to kind of give us your take on the season uh, maybe we'll dive into some more fan stuff here in the off season but i think that'll do it for this one again thank you guys so much for following us and checking us out so far and we hope you guys continue to do so and let's get a jayhawk victory in this guaranteed rate bowl game seven o'clock tonight all right we'll see you guys there